Make sure you add the promo to tell like it is. Today we're doing a Q&A. It's been a long time since I've done one of these. The last time I actually did a Q&A was with Greg during my Becoming Leader Than Greg Do Set series. So go back to that and actually check that out if you want to see that. But it has been, it's been a long time since I did one. So I thought I would do another one. There's been a lot of new subs to the channel. So guys, I really appreciate you guys coming to the channel for all my new subs. Um, this is a really cool thing that we're going to do today, obviously. Then you can kind of see where I come from. Ask me some personal things. These are going to be some personal questions here. That, and the answers will kind of give you a little bit more of a idea of who I am, I guess. So anyway, so we're just going to read these questions off. The 16 questions, I'm going to read them all. Here we go. What's the reason for bodybuilding? What motivates you on the daily? What was your typical diet like before, Greg? Um, so my story for becoming a bodybuilder, I basically finished all of my years of eligibility at St. Mary's University here in Nova Scotia. And throughout that process, I was in the CFL draft um, and I didn't make it to the CFL Pro Football League here in uh, Canada. I was in my last game, my first time ever losing uh, in a championship. Our school is one of the best schools in Canada. And basically I was like, what am I going to do next? So I'm basically looking down at my hand. I broke my finger. So if you guys ever see me like this, like, you know, I'm doing like, if I cover my face and stuff, you see my finger doesn't really bend. It doesn't bend. I broke my finger. The last game of football um, and the game we lost, which sucks. It was, the, it was the first game we ever lost a championship game. Basically, I was like, what do we do next? And I remember just throughout my, throughout my career being a football player, in, you know, when I was in St. Mary's playing, there's been a lot of guys who were like, hey man, you should bodybuild. You know, guys like Santana Anderson, Prince Bobang. And I would never, I would be like, no. Cause like that was me. I was like the, I was a football player that dude that was like, I'm not gonna be in a banana hammock. I'm not gonna go on stage being, getting all greased up, blah, blah, blah. So funny thing is, I ended up being that dude. So I called these couple of these guys up. I'm like, when's the next show? I wanna try it out. And lo and behold, I ended up, I ended up doing the first show. So lo and behold, my first show was, I would say, I finished playing football in November. And the show was March that following year, and that's when I met Greg. That was the first time I did a bodybuilding show, and I came third that show. What motivates me to every day? My daughter. Before my daughter was born, I always wanted to be successful within sports. I always wanted to be a professional athlete. I always wanted to, you know, be the best I could be. So the challenges of being, you know, a professional athlete and being the best athlete I can be motivates me every single day. Obviously, money does too, because I want to. I want to make a lot of money <laughs> I do um, because I want to give my family everything they want and we do make pretty good money now but to be honest you know the fact that this channel is doing good my business online is doing well too working getting up every day motivates me because um, as an entrepreneur I can ma I'm making good money and I can make more so that motivates me so I'm being honest guys you know what I'm saying Mo money motivates me straight up and my daughter overall is the biggest motivator there is. So there you go. Um, my diet before I met Greg Doucette, I was only in the, I was only competing for a year before I started actually eating like Greg. I, that's when basically I started working with Greg was after a year of me competing. He dieted me for my national show the, the following year and I came uh, third. Before that, I was eating your basic, you know, whole food meals, chicken, broccoli, your fats, all that stuff, oats. But to be honest, that's all I could afford. So. I only ate really very basic because I could only afford basic ass food. So next question, how do you stay so humble and down to earth in such a super masculine egotistical profession slash job? So my mother's a reverend, my grandfather's reverend, his father was a reverend. So I, we grew up in a very strict religious home and at the core of our of religion, basically, you know, we grew up in a Pentecostal house was basically, you know, love your neighbor, you know, love your enemy as yourself, all those core values of Christianity is what keeps me humble because it's something I was kind of like basically instilled in me. I would say even almost brainwashed, but those values are very good values to be brainwashed about. So that's always been in my life, no matter where I was when I was playing football and I've always been at a high level when I played football, the same thing. I never thought of myself having greater purpose than somebody else. Like my job as a strength and conditioning coach or a personal trainer or whatever, the title you want to give, I guess, myself or anyone like me in this industry is a title of people that give service. So I find that in this industry, we have mixed the service industry with the entertainment industry. You know what I'm saying? So you think about it, your strength conditioning coaches, personal trainers, nutritionists, dietitians, massage therapists, osteopaths, those are all services that you buy. And those are all services that are done to service you. We are in your service. You know what I'm saying? Because that we showcase what we are what we have and the knowledge we have on YouTube, 
people have kind of mixed this whole thing to thinking that we are some kind of like star. You know what I mean? Because he has this many subscribers, he is greater than somebody else because of this many subscribers. And I feel like that's completely, utterly false. We are here for a service to everybody else. So we might be entertaining, but I'm working. <laughs> I'm here working and that's it. And that's what keeps me humble. This is my job. And I'm blessed to be able to do this in training and stuff that I love. I'm very blessed to be able to do what I love to do. But it doesn't mean my life is any greater than anybody else's life. My father was a factory worker, worked 70 hours a week, 60, 70 hours, literally, he worked a lot. And how, you know, that's including his job and then other stuff he'd pick up. He would go and do, you know, shovel people's driveways, whatever. And when it was in the winter time, he would, you know, go work, rake someone else's grass and leaves, do some, do the lawn. I grew up with all those kind of, I grew up with a lot of that instilled in me that, you know, we came from very humble beginnings. Now my father went and lost his job and then ended up being a porter at the casino, you know, a janitor, you know what I'm saying? So I see people's jobs as being, it doesn't matter what job it is, is just as important as mine is. So yeah, I gotta stay humble. I'm, not, I'm nothing special at all. I am a special person. I feel like I'm special, I feel like you're special, I feel like everybody has a unique part in this world, but nobody has a greater purpose than anybody else in this world. You might have a, a bigger title that allows you to have more things or more choices, more options in the world, more money, those kind of things, but it doesn't mean that you have uh, more of a purpose than anybody else, and that's what I 100% believe. What was your first impression of Greg? Uh, I thought Greg was an absolute idiot. I'm gonna be completely honest and he'll laugh at it. Uh, quick story, I was closing for the first time. I worked at Wireless Wave. It's like T-Booth, you know, T-Mobile, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, you know, little kiosk that sells phones. And anyway, so I'm closing for the first time ever. And it's like, it's on a Sunday, it's like 4.50, mall closed at five o'clock, people's lights are going off, you hear the freaking, the doors going like this. And then this guy is walking, beelining it right towards me. I'm like, please don't be a return, please don't be a return, don't be a return. And then lo and behold, it's Greg. I don't know who this guy is. This is actually a year before I even started bodybuilding. I'm like, what's up? He's like, hey, um, can I return my Bluetooth? And I'm like, yeah, man, sure. Just give me a sec. I basically haven't done return before. So I'm like, frick. So I call my boss. I'm like, hey, um, listen, I got a guy here who wants to return his Bluetooth. Um, you know, how did you return? He's like, before asking, before doing the return, ask me if you paired the Bluetooth. Okay, give me a sec. Yo. Did you pair the Bluetooth? And he's like, pair the Bluetooth? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you gotta pair the Bluetooth. So I basically opened up his thing, paired his Bluetooth, hey man, it works. He thought that you could just buy a Bluetooth, open it up, and then just plug it in your ear and it works. That was, I started buying a in 2012, that was in 2011, okay? So that has not changed. His ability to use technology has maybe in, in, improved by a slight bit. Like I remember what his, his reasons for not buying an iPhone. He had a Blackberry until the last moment. He's like, I need to have Blackberry because it's easier to just type on this thing. I'm like, Greg, get a damn iPhone. And then he finally got, so it's like, he's always been like that. So my first impression was like, you know, wh like what the heck, this guy is, ugh. Um, but it was nice though. So it wasn't like he it wasn't rude. It wasn't like that. He was just like very, I was like, Jesus Christ. And then like when I actually met him, um, the following year and then I found out who he actually was and you know, I was like, Oh my God, that was actually you back in the day. Um, but yeah, he was, he's cool. He was like, he was just really cool and in your face still, but not like, Hey, what's going on? He was just like, I remember my first conversation, um, I was doing back and he was doing back and he came over and was like, Hey, He's like, hey, what's going on? I was like, are you doing the show? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, cool. Are you doing, are you doing light heavy? I'm like, nope, heavyweight. He's like, oh, okay, so you're probably, and then he got into like the dieting thing and I'm like, who's this dude? Like, this guy, asked, like, first of all, he just asked if I was doing light heavy. In my head, I'm doing heavyweight. So immediately it was like, there's, there's Greg saying what he thinks and not really knowing. <laughs> then I'm like, yo, man, I want to be heavyweight. Light heavy, what the heck? Like, pff, I play football, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, so that was my first impression of Greg. And that's it for the questions, guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button, notification button. So next time I put a video, you're the first ones to get it. And for coaching, johnnystreve.com. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at underscore johnnystreve underscore and get 20% off on iamutant.com by using my code john20 for 20% off. Anyway, progressive overload your life.
Until next time, keep June chasing. Peace.